Welcome back to LimQ Plus, everyone. On this channel, I'm 100%ing Breath of the Wild by a bit every day until the sequel comes out, which is today in 173 days. I will talk about different topics every day while playing. I hope you enjoy. And today I'm giving you an in-depth explanation on how speedrunners do Divine Beast Va Rudania. The Divine Beast inside the Elden Death Mountain. This Divine Beast is very intricate and very cool. And I wanted to just like slow down and show you some cool strategies for this Divine Beast. So when you go into Varudania, the lights obviously turn off and you basically can't see. But this obviously doesn't stop speedrunners from already making some progress. The first thing you want to do is essentially light the torch on the opposite side of the uh, Divine Beast. And you can kind of see this little... I'm going with the crosshair around it. There's this pillar of malice. If you aim just to the side of it... You, okay, the problem is my fire actually went off. But if you aim just to the side of this pillar with the blue flame, you actually perfectly light up the torch on the opposite side, already opening the door on the other side. Next up, what we tend to do is we throw a bomb over to this metal door. There's actually some vines in front of the metal door that make it so that you can't open it yet. And then we switch to our bomb arrows. Now we blow up the bomb and what this does is it lights up the surroundings briefly to allow us to shoot through this gap in um, the wall there to burn some leaves on top of this room. Those leaves uh, were actually blocking a metal box that we will be needing later. You can see the vines are actually still on the door but there was a bar basically here um, that was blocking the door which we blew up by blowing up the bomb and then again the bomb also basically gave us some extra lighting for us to see where to shoot that bomb arrow to light up the flames up top and then we can already activate the first terminal you can see the music is changing now and it's getting a little bit more intense now one strategy that i actually won't be able to show off here because i don't have the correct bow is uh, a strategy using the duplex bow where if you light this torch on fire uh, if you light your arrow on fire on this torch and then shoot this guardian into the eye the first arrow will actually kill the guardian and the second arrow will perfectly fly to the opposite side of the um the room to light up the torch that i just shot Again, because I know the visual cue for this, I was still able to shoot the flame on the opposite side of the Divine Beast. You do then have to take care of these two glowing eyes for later. I can pick up these Guardian parts. This is still a 100% playthrough at the same time. And then we tend to run into this room, actually turning the lights back on and gaining control of the Divine Beast. The controls in this Divine Beast, um, if you play the game casually, basically allow you to turn the Divine Beast in a 90 degree angle. It can either be even on the ground or on the wall of the volcano, which changes the mechanics of the beast a little bit. And uh, this is one of the Divine Beasts where we do need to do that. If you've been following this playthrough on this channel, this is actually the last Divine Beast that I have to do. Uh, in tomorrow's episode, I'm probably going to beat Ganon um, so that we have some um, insight on how many percentages of the game we've already completed. Now in the next step, um, there's a pretty impressive strat. So let me show you what I'm about to do first. This is the biggest puzzle usually in the Divine Beast. There's a torch on the top of the Divine Beast here that's kind of hard to initially light up that then unlocks a puzzle that you can see up here. There's this like little, um, whatchamacallit, little track and a metal ball is supposed to roll through it. But you at first have to release the metal ball. So what we do in speedruns is we actually light this arrow on fire with the blue flame here, then walk back a little bit and position in a very specific spot where we can then shoot the ceiling. This arrow will then fall from the ceiling into the torch uh, lighting it up and releasing the orb. Now we can turn the Divine Beast to get our next terminal on this side while we are also at the same time releasing the orb and making it roll down into the spot where it needs to be. We can then jump over and shoot this Malice Eye outside. This will be needed for the final terminal later. And then if we watch over here the Metal Ball literally just arrived perfectly in time for us to grab this metal box and release the metal ball and uh, not the metal ball the normal ball down where it has to go 
this will unlock the door for the terminal number four. But at first, we have to deal with terminal number three. Terminal number three is in this case behind us. And you can see a metal box there. This metal box would usually not be there. But if you think back to the beginning of the Divine Beast, when we shot the leaves on the ceiling, this is what released this metal box and we are going to need it. But how are we going to get in here? So casually, you're supposed to light up an arrow and shoot it through this window. But the developers didn't check that you can literally just crouch walk through this hole. The first time I saw this, I was extremely surprised. But now we can just basically grab the box that we released at the beginning of the Divine Beast and uh, block the flame so that we, that we can pass through. Immediately turn the Divine Beast around so we can gain access to terminal number three. And then as soon as terminal number three is activated, we want to turn the Divine Beast back again. So that Link can leave and then once again crouch walk through this hole. It's always very funny to see. Now just before activating terminal number um, four, we are going to twist Vaudrania the Divine Beast again for the final strategy of this. And then jump back, run in front of this Malice and then use Rivali Scales ability to perfectly make it on top of the Divine Beast. I'm going to switch to a different bow here because I'm kind of running out of um, good weaponry. And then finally, unlock Terminal 5. I think this is a very satisfying Divine Beast to play fast just because of how perfectly everything aligns. And this was it. Now we can take on um, Fireblight Ganon, which conveniently is also right here. So we are ready to start the fight. I actually don't have the best gear on this file, so I won't be able to show you the perfect speedrunning strats. Um, I'm actually about to learn the 100% speedrun on my Twitch stream again. I might be live right now doing that. Twitch is such slim cube little advertisement. Um, but yeah, usually you use uh, triple shot bows and ancient wow, arrows and also stasis cool. plus to completely obliterate this boss. I'm still going to use a similar idea where I use this little plateau here to get into bullet time. But my damage output is so much worse. It's so much worse than it usually would be. One thing we can do here though is uh, blow Link up. <laughs> that was not my intention at all, but I wanted to knock down Fire Blight so that I can... Um, so that I can basically do a little bit more damage. I just realized though that I do still have the Great Eagle Bow. And while the Great Eagle Bow can catch on fire, that's fine. Um, as long as we just use it for a little bit of damage. As long as we are careful that we are not unintentionally burning it to the ground. That is phase one. Um, there's actually a nice strategy in phase two that doesn't require any bow. It's also what we use in any percent. Also keep in mind, this is a mechanic that some people are not aware of. Since this is the final Divine Beast that I'm going to be That's doing on this 100% um, playthrough, this Blight actually has 2000 HP. When you first start out the game, the Blights have much less HP. Yep. Uh, the first Blight actually only having 800. But yeah, blowing this guy up and then just starting a spin attack usually allows you to get a decent amount of damage in. Uh, I probably have to do that one more time and then he should be defeated. I can also though just simply backflip from here, switch back to my Great Eagle Bow, get a lot of DPS in and then just finish off the fight. Uh, or not because he has 1 HP, but you get the idea. The uh, speedrunning strategies for the divine for the divine beast fight for the, the um, blight fight right now are basically essentially a one shot. You use stasis plus and then use this very extreme modified bow to literally beam this guy out of the existence. Um, I wasn't able to show this off in this more casual run through, but this is how speedrunners essentially do divine beast Varudania. And when it comes to my playthrough, this is the final divine beast. We have now completed all four. And in tomorrow's recording, I'm going to go to uh, Pyro Castle to beat um, Ganon. So we can actually see how much percentage of the game we have completed, which right now is probably around 3%, maybe 4%. From tomorrow's uh, recording on, we're actually going to be starting to collect Korok Seed Shrines and locations to get that completion up to 100 until Tears of the Kingdom comes out, which again is in 173 days. 
We're getting there closer to the next 10 day barrier, almost in the 160s. But yeah, I wanted to do this to today again. The next episodes on this channel are gonna be more, um, are gonna be different talking topics because I'm probably busy most of the time just going from Korok to Korok, shrine to shrine. But I thought I'd use this to, I said that's trying to interrupt me. Explain you my favorite divine beast. Your clash with Ganon at Hyrule Castle. And I wonder if you will too, because that's what I will be doing tomorrow. Um, probably gonna be zooming from here over there. Actually, before I do that, I will quickly pick up the boulder break. I was talking about this in a different episode. I wasn't sure what the name of this weapon was because I was ranking all of the champion weapons. So I guess I'm about to find out what it's called. It's an actually pretty useful weapon for the uh, Ganon fight, because in phase 2 you can just spin to win. So let me pick that up. Here it is. The Boulder Breaker, that's right. 60 damage, decent durability, and my inventory is full. Couldn't have been better. Uh, timing wise, well, the sledgehammer is about to break anyway, so that's what it's gonna be replaced by. Um, I hope you enjoyed my explanations or just hanging out uh, with some Breath of the Wild gameplay tomorrow. We're going to Hyrule Castle and then start the true 100% hunt. We still have 172 days. Thank you for watching, and I will see you tomorrow.